Welcome to Edney Studios. I am Edney and in this video we are going to break down this photo manipulation. Please make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel. Let's get started. Okay, so right here this is this was the final image so starting I first so you go wanting to create this photo manipulation you go new new then i use 3250 4250 pixels then it's 300 pixel per inch yeah that's what i use so and then you create it well this is a breakdown too so first i have this sky layer so then i added this right here so this was the image so this is it and i maxed it out maxed it out so to max it out yeah, so you let's delete this to max it out i clicked on the max button i click click on the max button then use the brush to made it a little bigger yeah then just painted with black as the color just painted and yeah you have it you got it blending right in now so this this something like this that's what i did so then same thing here this was the original image then max it out you got this also original image and then i maxed it out to get this then i used i created a new so i brightened it with this layer so how to brighten it is you create you create a new layer so you ca come here and create a new layer set it to color dodge go to color dodge with your with your brush you you hold out and select a color so from this place you hold out select this color then you paint over it so you, i think you have to just decrease some of the flow here 20 then you hold out paint then it brightens the it makes the colors pop so that that's how i did it so come here Whenever you want to brighten, you hold out, click, and you paint over it, and you kind of brighten, kind of brighten it. So this is the whole concept. So that's what I did here. And I brightened it. So after brightening it, I added these rocks. So original image. I don't original image was this then i cut it out with a pen tool but you can also use um you can also use a select so you can select subject then it selects it for you i think there is something wrong here or you can also use this quick selection tool so just yes right here you just use to select select it and it's that simple but i wanted it to be more perfect kind of so if you spend time on it you get a better image so select then when you mask when you max it out so you kind of delete this max for now so i think this also yeah so when you max it out, this is what you get. Then you can blur it for a smoother transition, as in a, a smoother cutout. So go to blur and blur more. You kind of blur the thing, or you can also use blur and Gaussian blur. Oh, not this. So you can also use the blur and Gaussian blur. And set it to some way to or 1.5 kind of bless it 
ማለት ነው so that's that's how to do it yes yes that's my suggestion try use the pencil control d2 then i blur it out then i added a levels adjustment to layer so with this go to levels i went to levels click clip so we tap this to clip it to we clip it to this this layer you can either hold alt and click between the middle or use this so and i sent this drag it in, inside and yeah you kind of send this and we get this kind of look so you experimenting it you're experimenting with it more you get a perfect a perfect look you want to so that's kind of what i did so this is it i got this look then i use the exposure so i kind of sent so i send this and i i use the gamma gamma correction so so this so let me create a new so after this so I go to adjustment then exposure send this little yeah kind of bring this so it gives this is and the gamma correction gives a little contrast something like that so that's how i did that one too then i added a color balance layer to blend to blend the image better so with the color balance you go to here and um, the adjustment please and click color balance so with this we bring in the shape to this to this side then we bring in this So this is kind of so bring the cyan bring in more cyan because there are more blues in in the image or in the sky so bring more cyan we bring in more of the blues too bring in more of the blues the magenta we decrease it according to how so we this one we added more of the greens because it, there was too much magenta in it so so kind of we added more of the greens to remove the magenta and bring in more blues so that's what we did so this is also how i i color matched the the rocks to <coughs> i color matched the rocks to the kind of the background then i added some highlights to the rocks i added some highlights to the rocks making it so brought some highlights and then duplicated duplicated the layer so how to add the highlights so come and create a new layer so creating a new, new layer you make sure you 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 clip all to the rock layer so using alt then click it so then create a new layer set it to linear dodge set to linear dodge take the brush to send the size to what you want then come and select the color the color you want you want to use the color you want to paint with select it from the background or if you you know the colors you can also click and select it from this this area so you kind of select then you paint over select the color then you paint kind of it so let me let me do it
So kind of this how I added the highlights. When you finish, you double click on the layer. Then we want to kind of remove the highlights from the dark or the shadows area. So we kind of so we first pull down the underline layer. So you're saying what but it's too hard to use alt click then bring it back. Bring this here and send this. So this is kind of how you accomplish that. Then I duplicated it because I wanted it to be more. Also the same thing. Kind of this. But when doing it, you make sure you do it better than this. You do it well. So kind of this. So I just, this one I painted on this place. Selected this color, painted selected painted here yeah okay you must also check your flow and opacity too uh, i painted on these places then duplicated i duplicated earlier to kind of bring in more of the colors i painted to kind of painted over these all these places then i i dodged and bent the rocks so kind of so i kind of darkened the places which we know the lights are coming from this portion so when coming from this place these places will be dark obviously so how i did that was so go to layer layer new layer soft light and fill with 50 percent gray so with this press d2 reset this so the way this when you paint with black when you paint with black it will darken the place and white will brighten so there's that so when i paint you see it's darkening it's darkening all these areas so that's kind of how you accomplish this so the dark darkens bringing you see the dimensions and kind of bring, making it more realistic and toggle white to brighten okay so alt then clip so and white to brighten this part also where the lights are falling on yes. So this is kind of what I did so before and after. So yeah, there is a big difference. You see that it has brought in more, made the photo better. So this is what I did. And I grouped all these layers. Hold, click on the first one and shift, click on the last one. And I press Ctrl G to grip it and named it background so there is it then i created a stamp visible layer thus i created a screenshot of the whole image control alt shift e control alt shift e i created this and i added a blur i bled the background but we will need the subject before we blur the background too that will come on later so coming to the subject so coming to the subject i first this was this is the shadow i created but before we create a before we create a shadow where well, this is the subject so this was the original image and i used a pen tool i used the pen tool to max it out and that is a long very long process so using pen to it gives you precision using pen to gives you precision but it's very very 
um, time consuming. Let me say so. It's very time consuming. So I use the pen too. But an alternative is to use an alternative is to use the is to use the select subject. So using the select select selecting subject gives you a, a pretty good selection of the subject. So you can use the quick selection tool to fine tune to fine tune the selection. So you can zoom in and bring in this kind of painting. You do your manual. You do it manually. So after I've selected the subject. So after I've selected the subject, I added the levels adjustment. I added some levels. So with this, how I, I did it in the previous one, you go to levels, then bring down because the light is behind her, this place will be a lot darker. So make her a little dark. Say something like this brings down, yeah. So you bring down her brightness, kind of, and so this, this kind of how this is what I did to so bring down the levels. So using the levels, kind of darken the image. Then I use the color balance to color balance to color grid or color match here. So come here then color balance color balance then as usual because she is we can see that there are more blues and, and magenta in the image so we kind of match her to match her with that so we increase the blues the cyan a little so this 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 kind of what I did so this this how to match this how I match the, the subject to the background. So how to add the these highlights. So we first create a new layer. Linear linear dodge. Then taking our brush to zoom in. select the part of the place you want to do with part with the color then paint so um, then so you paint over here also because there are because there are some lights coming from this side so this kind of this color is to paint so kind of this then I think we paint here too. So this is kind of for the pink, for the pink color. You see I've named it the pink. So you double click then remove it from the shadows. Hold Alt then click to to make the transitioning smooth. So this is kind of it. So zooming out, you see it has added nice highlights too. That's added a nice highlights to the the image, and it's making it blend more with the background. So this is kind of for the the pink you name it double click and name it pink you create another one also linear dodge we we'll go to the blue the blue as then click and then here we paint <laughs>
we we take it away from the shadows we break it and and this 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 is what we get here with oh, this the <coughs> the blue highlights also this this and this i think this mean what i did and yeah i didn't even paint i mean i didn't paint here so forgot to even highlight this areas okay so i even highlighted here pink and because of this highlight so this this so i think i'll leave this as the blue highlight so with this i'll just i'll just add i'll just add the blue highlights to the place And then I think I will remove it from the pinks, create a layer max and just remove it. And that's it. This must be blue instead of the pink. So I think that's that. This is it. So I delete this. So this uh this this is it. So we without the highlights and with the highlights, see there's a great difference that's much more with that's blended more with the distance. So we with the highlights we've gotten a nicer very like it has really blended it has really blended the the image to the background. That's really done it and we've added some white white things white lines that have made it, that have made the the highlight even stronger so with this we create we create a new new layer put it on normal then i think so we use the white white as a foreground color white then You paint where the highlights are paint. So the, this makes the highlights pop more so zoom out you see this before and this after it, it has brought more highlights to the place that highlighted the place more so that's what you do to all these places kind of draw 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 there and then you get what i mean so it, this this what i did i drew using you see so i i took a lot of time it this took a lot of time when you need to you draw on the hairs you draw on the hairs you draw kind of yeah so you draw it and then so zoomed in this is how it is back and zoomed out it has added a lot of details to the highlights so the that's the use of this white called it white highlight here and after that we we added some dodge and bend to the subject so that's what i did here i painted all these places it has brought some it has brought in some dimension and the next step is so i created the shadow 
So this 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 was the shadow layer. Okay. So I created a shadow bar and on top of it I put the contact here. So zoomed out you see the shadow. I think it's even so this 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 is what I did. So creating the shadow we create a new layer. We create a new layer then using the brush we select select one of the we select the dark the dark portions of the rock so kind of selecting dark places you use multiply as the blending mode then you draw you draw in some shadows so draw the shadows so I think why I did it the lights light the majority of the bigger lights kind of the main light is coming from this direction so it's it's the shadows will be in this this kind of this direction so So this the these are the shadows. Let me remove the spaces. So this kind of the shadows you can blend. So with this you go to click on the thumbnail. You blur blur the shadows to make it more realistic. So I think a twenty pixel blur will be okay or even lower 15 pixels so we kind of blend then then but we see that we still see that it's not really in contact with with the rock so we move to on, on top of the layer or above the layer then we create another another new layer set it to multiply and this time with that same color we paint we paint over it we paint where there should be contact i think it has it so zoomed out we see that it's kind of having contact with the rock with 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 some time and precision you can get a very a very good a very good um result so deleting this so this this the contact layer and this the the shadow I came out with so this is but now we've gotten the subject and then so you blur the background click here and then control or shift control alt e to create a sound visible layer and then you can create you set it convert it to a smart object go to filter blur blur gallery you go to blur gallery and use the tool shift to use the tool shift We'll bring it to where the blur make sure the legs are in focus. I have a video on how to blur a background in Photoshop. Thank you. So I think so we, we send this up. Yeah, so is there is it then we increase the blur according to how we want it to be so i think this is okay so i think this is okay so we've we've blurred the background blurred the background i think when 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 doing it you you must first make sure you switch off all 
all these layers must make sure you switch off all these layers or oh, oh, uh, otherwise this is what will happen to you switch you must switch off all these layers then we blend the background i forgot to do that but you must switch off this you must make sure all these layers are so if we only these layers available then you create a stamp visible here then you blur the background and you get so i think now this 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 how i did it so you see it's only the background that's blurred and then we have our subject here and one thing i added was this animal this animal to kind of bring in more subjects to the image so this animal that's that's what i added so first <coughs> So it was already a cutout. This was already a cutout. I downloaded the PNG file of the animal. Then I added levels. So I added this levels adjustment to to brought brought in brought back the I can made it dark. And this is how I did to the other images. The same thing added a color balance to kind of blend it in added an exposure to darken the image and added some highlights the same way you create so the same way you create new layer linear dodge zoom into the image <laughs> So when you zoom out, you see this, this is there. So this is what I did. Not too well. This is what I did. I brought in some highlights here. Oh, I think this, this, this is also cool. So these, these are the highlights. Highlights. And then I added the whites. So I added the whites to the added the whites the same way. So with the white I I use the normal. So you see it's all normal. I use the white. I use the white then painted painted over it. Then we got this white. Put this to you. Can remove some from there. So this this kind of what you do. So this for the animal, I think. So the then I drew the shadows for it. So you create the shadows you create. You create a new layer then you using the same using somewhere i think using this this kind of the the shadows kind of here then you paint you paint you paint some thank you let's create a new layer so i painted i painted the legs into the legs then increase the brush and just paint it something like this for the body you kind of get this this shadow of the dog or the animal so this is kind of how i i created it this is how i created the the shadows so then i added some foreground why is something like a foreground to the image to spice things up? So this is just so first. So I added these three. I added these three. 
So I added this tree and bled it out. So this was the tree. This was the tree, this kind of dead tree, and I I bled it. I bled it out. And I decreased the exposure. Almost making it black. And I added another tree here. Also bled it out. Color matched it. I color matched it. So I think. So this how it was and I added some some blues, some some science and and blues to the tree. Then I decrease its exposure. I decrease the tree's exposure. I decrease its exposure and brought in some gamma corrections, also known as the contrast. And I and I added some glow to the part. This part adding uh, some sort of highlights to the tree. So this this. Adding some highlights to the foreground and stuff, and we down for this place. So this place was for a reflection. So the reflection. So this was, and so how I created the reflection was. I first created I first created a stamp visible layer. Shift Control Alt E. Alt E, then I control T, then I think you I rotated it, flip vertical, flip vertical, brought it downwards. I cut out this place using using the marquee to use the re rectangular marquee. Then hold out, hold out, and create a mask. Then bring this upward to where it intersects with it. Then we go to filter. We go to filter. We go to this this dot. Go to this place. We use this, is this, this, this parameters, let's see, this figures or this settings. And I created, I created a displacement map, a displacement, a displacement map. And I'll link, I'll link the video of creating a displacement map on top here so you can see it. And so you watch that and then you understand how to create the displacement map so then so this the displacement map and then we see there are some distortions here so it has created this this kind of water effect so when you watch the video you will see you will see how to create the water reflection kind of so after that then i added this this black so i think this is it so after you create this i just wanted to cover this kind of thing this place so yeah i just created i just created a new layer just get a new layer and painted with black using the brush. Just painted. And that's kind of covered. Covered it up so this before and this after. So this this how I created the water reflection. And after all this, then I created a stamp visible layer, shift control alt e and created a smart object and opened camera raw. I edited 
Look, I did overall editing in camera roll. So in the in camera roll, we bring in the blues and magenta. So then we go to the color mixer. Then bring the blues a little to the left. Then aqueous. We increase their saturation. Increase their saturation and the luminance. Go back to the basics. The basics we bring. Bring back the blacks. Increase the white a little. Shadows here. Kind of this little little edits, and we increase the opacity kind of so this is the before and this is the after that is kind of what i did well after the editing as we see that it has over brighten the face so we kind of remove the brightness painting on this layer mask remove the brightness from the face we don't need that much brightness so here yeah, we've gotten this image so this <coughs> so so this this what we've gotten overall so this is this I see the final image so I think I'll be doing more of this very soon so if you like what you see please make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe i'll see you in the next tutorial peace